So the uh, next slide is about the uh, tips and the pitfalls about the uh, grant funding, and Justin is going to uh, cover this content. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. So uh, you, you'll hear a lot of the same kind of themes um, from each of us as we kind of talk about our different parts, but there are, there are many different things that each of the pieces that are up here are, <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost like a law that's out there, right? It's there because somebody broke it. Um, the tips are up here because somebody, either in our panel, personally, we've maybe not done it, and there was an opportunity to do it better. So one of the things that, that, that I'll say I think is most important is when you're putting one of these together, whether it's a funding mechanism for uh, NIH, for AAMC, for the SAEM grants, is to give yourself enough time, and you heard John mention it already, is really preparing for that. What does that mean? It's not two to three weeks. Sometimes it's not even two to three months, but some of the very full grants, the, the one that uh, you know, Sally's talking about, I would imagine probably took somewhere between 300 and 400 hours to really put that together. So very involved grants that have that can really take many, many months to put that together and refine the idea. One of the things that can help with that is the second one, the second bullet point on there, which is putting the right team together. So you may have a great idea, but you really want to uh, surround yourself by folks who are expert in that area and can give critical feedback because the reviewers are really looking for a great idea that's going to meet a need, that's going to advance our understanding of medical education, of education in general. And they have the right to be very critical of every idea that comes through because there's only limited resources for that. Having a team that is able to be very transparent with each other and challenge each other about the ideas or about different sections of the grant is really helpful. So not just people who always agree with everything that you're putting down on paper, but having being able to have that dialogue of individuals who can challenge what you may have put down to help continue to refine it and make it the best that it can be. That may also be people who are outside of our kind of normal area of practice, right? It's easy to partner with someone who's in your own department who you know with, who you know and you work well with and have worked with for many years, but that may not actually be the right person for the grant. You may actually need to go outside that, oftentimes even outside of emergency medicine, sometimes even outside of medicine in general. So I'll give you kind of an example for myself. The funding that I have now through the American Heart Association is actually a partnership uh, between myself and a mechanical engineer um, and the entire engineering department at one of our universities. So, and that partnership has allowed us to examine data in a completely different way than I would have ever, ever imagined initially. And putting that team together was what helped us to really be successful with the, the application and, and several rounds of funding from the American Heart Association for that. So, so now that you've kind of given yourself time, you say maybe six months, eight months, something like that for, for a significant size grant, you have the team assembled, the, the folks who are going to review your grant, um, and I'm going to step uh, back for just a minute. There are multiple different uh, funding mechanisms, but let's, let's say it's an example of something like NIH. You may have two or three primary reviewers who are going to look at your work. One of them is going to be the real detailed reviewer who is going to go through kind of everything that's there. That person may very well be the only person who reads the entire grant. I'm sorry. I know that's disheartening after I just said you're going to put hundreds of hours worth of work into it, but maybe at best you'll have one person, maybe two people that completely read through it. Most other folks, as they look at it, are really going to focus on the AIMS page. So the third, uh, the third row up there is taking time to really flesh out the AIMS page. This is where you have the opportunity to draw in the individuals who are going to be reviewing your grant. You have one page to really try to make an impact that says, look, the work that we want to do is really important. There's a very large knowledge gap. We need this funding to be able to do this because look at all the problems we're going to solve if we're able to do this. It's very hard to articulate that in one page, and that's why focusing on this often takes a lot of time in the grant. So giving yourself enough time to prepare that initial page, because again, that's about all that most people are going to read from it. The, the last two points up there um, are really, uh, sorry, the, the, the next to last point up there is taking a step back from our own work and as each of us gets really involved in a grant, it's sometimes easy to get too close to the information that's there. And so seeking outside input can really help to, again, refine the, the process. It can help to refine the grant, help to refine your AIMS page by getting someone who has not been with you from the very beginning, but you get an outside person to look at it, almost like a reviewer. So they have that opportunity to take that step away from kind of the conversation and read it. Does it make sense? 
is does it sound impactful? Does it really convey on the on page what you've actually talked with your entire team about for several months? And sometimes what you may think comes across clear in the paper does not come across at all, and you need that outside input to be able to do that. So including that in to have partners, mentors, whoever can review your work and really look at it is, I think, essential to really having a successful application. Um, the last thing, it says submit early. It should also say submit often because as, as you heard John, and, and I think you'll hear everyone up here say, um, you know, it's great when we can tell you about the ones that we've gotten, but there are magnitudes more that we've not gotten, right? So we've, we've applied to multiple grants that have not been funded, but you're able to use that and apply to other ones. But the last key about uh, submitting early is even though this process for whether it's NIH or, or a variety of other agencies happens multiple times throughout the year, there are almost always challenges with the submission process. Some piece of paper that didn't get included, somebody's signature that's not on there, some issue with the uh, either the computer system goes down or some other issue. Um, so, you know, for myself, for the grants that, that we've submitted at my institution, we try to have everything in about three weeks ahead of time and actually submit that early um, because one of the very first ones that we actually put in, everything went down. Uh, we actually missed that deadline. We had to wait about another six months for another deadline to come up. So giving yourself kind of almost a, a deadline ahead of the deadline will really help so that you're not at that crunch. And if you then have some other issues come up, that's okay. You have a little buffer that's built in for it.